do is we're going to first go through problem 10 from chapter 4. And we're going to do it the way that you would be used to. Then we're going to redo the problem and instead we're going to use unit vectors. Just to show you the difference between the way we used to do it and the way you would do it using unit vectors. So problem 10, chapter 4. Flanagan, could you please read the problem for me? Start an avalanche on a mountain slope, an artillery shell is fired with an initial velocity of 300 meters per second at 55.0 degrees above the horizontal. Stop for a second. The 300, it says 300 meters per second, correct? Yes. How many sig figs on that number, Justin? On? 300 meters per second. Um, one, or three. Which one is it? One. Class, one? Yes. yes. Or three? One. Oh, that's the book. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> but remember, just to review, that number actually has one, right? But according to the book, they've just said, you know what? We'll have a default of three. So they're going to assume that has three. Right? When we get to an answer, we should give an answer with three sig figs. And I understand that that's irksome. It is, I mean, does it say 55 points or 55? Point zero. Point zero. Of course it does, that makes sense. Why illustrate one and not the other? Okay. Um, Jeff. I'm sorry, Flanagan, you were reading. I apologize. Okay. It explodes on the mountainside 42.0 seconds after firing. What are the Hold on. What? So that's the displacement, in, or I'm sorry, the change in time, 42 seconds. What are the x and y coordinates of the shell where it explodes relative to its firing point? Okay, so the shell is going to start here. We have some sort of mountain. We're going to launch it. Here, mountain. We have a launch. It goes up and strikes the mountain somewhere over here. Uh, and we're looking for two things. We'll say um, we're looking for delta x and delta y equal question mark, assuming we'll have it start, position initial is equal to zero in both the x and y direction. Plenty. That's it. That's it. We'll figure out the two positions. Okay. So the two changes in position, assuming if we set initial x and y both equal to zero, then we're looking for delta x and delta y. Step one, Hannah. Oh, um. It's a projectile motion problem, so we're just solving this. What, what should we do first? We should solve for um, delta y and delta y. Uh, right, but well, we need to do stuff. I agree we need to solve for delta y, but we need to do stuff before we can really even begin working with this. What do we need to do first? Carol? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It. All the information, the givens, in the x direction and the y direction. Good. Okay. Because in the x direction class, what is true? The acceleration is zero. We have a constant velocity. In the y direction, we have free fall. We can use UAM. The acceleration is equal to negative g, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So we list what we know in the x direction and the y direction. What is the one of the five UAM variables that is the same, Benedict? Oh, time. And why? It's a scalar. Because it's a scalar. It's the only one of the UAM variables that is a scalar. So let's list what we know in the x and y direction, please. Bob? Uh, delta t equals 42.0 seconds. It's the same. I'll just add it for both. Then the y direction, the acceleration equals negative 9.80 meters per second. Okay. The acceleration y direction equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Don't forget the squared, that's an important piece. Uh, velocity initial, uh, where we have to find velocity initial in the x and the y. Notice the velocity initial is neither directly in the x nor the y direction. We need to break it into its components. We have our initial velocity. 
which is equal to 300 with three sig figs meters per second and an angle of, what was it, 55? So theta equals 55 degrees. We need velocity initial x, velocity initial in the y, please. Please give me both. Uh, Josh. Notice, last year I would have forced you to start with the cosine of theta, but at this point we're going to do this so many times, this is fine. So velocity initial is 300 times a cosine of 55 degrees. The velocity initial in the x direction is equal to? Sorry, I'm going to disagree with that. Okay, good, because that didn't make any sense. I guess I heard wrong. 172 point. Okay, so 0729, that's in meters per second. We do the same thing with cosine to get the velocity initial in the y direction equals velocity initial, or I'm sorry, with sine, sine theta. So 300 times the sine of 55 degrees. So velocity initial in the y direction is equal to? 245.7456 meters per second. Great. Rather than re rewrite them over here, you understand we have the velocity value, well, right? And why not? Velocity initial in the x direction equals, I can't see, 172.0729. Velocity initial in the y direction equals 245.7456. Did I get that right? Yes. Great. Okay, so I do want to take a moment and just make you understand that you need to be very careful when doing this piece right here. Oftentimes, the angle is with the horizontal, but I am aware that oftentimes it is, so will sometimes I test you just to make sure, class. Yes. Do you think I will ever give you an angle with the vertical, just for fun? Yes. Probably. Absolutely. Got to make sure you're paying attention. All right, so here we are. We figured out the velocity initial in the x direction, velocity initial in the y direction. We have two variables in the x direction, three variables in the y direction. What shall we do next, Lynn? Use one of the universal acceleration uh, UAM equations. Uniformly accelerated motion. Um, so you, you could use a. V final, not velocity final, equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time. What are we missing on that equation, Mr. Lowe? Whether it's x or y direction. Right, so we need to identify this is all in the y direction, velocity final, y velocity initial, and y, dire y direction, and the acceleration in the y direction. Uh, we have, huh. Thoughts, rules be reflect. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Somebody reflect on this for me, Bob. We can't find position with it. This is a wonderful equation. And we can find the final velocity in the y direction. But as far as our problem is concerned, we don't really care too much about the final velocity in the y direction. Wonderful equation, we can use it, but it gets us nowhere as far as the problem is specifically concerned. Uh, Cindy. Um, so we can use um, the other equation, which would be delta y is equal to the velocity initial in the y direction times delta t plus one half times acceleration in the y direction times delta t squared. Good. Delta y is what we're solving for. Velocity initial in the y direction was right here 245.7456. I'm going to run out of space. I can go to it. The change in y is equal to 245.7456 multiplied by our change in time, which was 42, plus 1 half times acceleration, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, times the change in time, which is 42 squared. The change in y is equal to. Great. So the change in y with three sig figs is. 1,680 meters. We have figured out the displacement in the y direction relative to where it was launched. Levine, what now? Uh, to find its position in the x direction, we can take the velocity in the x direction and multiply by the time. We could, but we'd have to start with an equation. That would be my recommendation. Uh, down the x is equal to the i x. 
Not, that's not one of the equations on your equation sheet. I was always start with the equations on your equation sheet. We could, except I like to, to separate between the two. The acceleration is equal to zero in that particular case. I like to separate here and just identify that this is a constant velocity. It's subtle but important. Uh, Heather? Velocity in the x direction is equal to the change in the delta x over time. The change in position or the displacement over change in time. I do understand that it's going to work out to the exact same thing, but this better differentiates it from the uniformly accelerated one. So then the displacement in the x direction equals the velocity in the x direction multiplied by delta t. Delta x then equals the velocity in the x direction 172.0729 multiplied by our change in time, which is 42. We get the displacement in the x direction. 7,227.063. What was the first? Seven. Seven thousand two hundred twenty-seven. Yes. Okay. So with sig figs, we'll go at seven thousand two hundred thirty meters. All right. As promised, we've solved this the way we would have last year. Now we're going to go through and solve it using unit vectors and these position vectors. So. Let's start out by listing what we know as far as unit vectors are concerned. For example, what, let's do this 4 dash 10 with unit vector. What is the initial velocity then of the projectile? The initial velocity of the projectile, please. Mr. Deeds. Um, it was 300 meters. Right, but we're you talking about with unit vectors. So what oh, yeah. is the initial um, velocity? It would be, uh, I don't know. It's not really an answer. <laughs> OK. Um, so it would be like something uh, like something multiplied by i. Mm -hmm. I OK, well, let's start with the something multiplied by i. Oh, wait, no, I know. It's there you go. the initial times cosine. True. And at this point, we've already done all this work, so you could actually give me a number. Oh, true. Um, it would be 172. How many sig figs do you want? Which is right. What's there? Oh, 729. Okay. I plus 245.7456j. That's it. Oh, meters per second. Okay. So this is our initial velocity. Notice, rather than listing it as in the x direction and the y direction, we've listed the whole thing all together. What else do we know as far as unit vectors are concerned? Mr. Reed. The position initial is? Great. What else do we know? Jay. Um, the final position is um, well, actually, the final position is what we're trying to find. We've already solved the problem, so the final position is what we're trying to find. So our final is going to be equal to question mark, which is going to be equal to x comma y meter. Right? That's what we're solving for. Google. Um, we know that time is 42 seconds. Time is a scalar, so it remains to be 42 seconds. We know one other vector, Carlon. Uh, the acceleration vector. Is equal to? Negative 9.8 j. I want to be very clear here, yes, but I'm going to be a little bit more clear. I'm going to put zero i. Just to be clear that the acceleration in the x direction is zero. You could write it that way, it would still be fine. But, and multiply by our minus 9.8 j meters per second squared. So, we have our known variables. So, we can write our equation. Position final is equal to position initial plus velocity initial times delta t plus one half times the acceleration times delta t squared. Those are all vectors. Position final, which is what we're trying to find. Position final is equal to position initial, which is just zero comma zero, multiplied or plus the initial velocity, which is 172.0729 i 
plus 245.7456 times our time, which is 42 seconds, plus one half times the acceleration, which was negative 9.8 J times the delta T, which is 42 squared. Position fun equals. I need some numbers here. Why don't you give me uh, 172 point, et cetera, multiplied by 42, please, and 245.7, et cetera, multiplied by 42. Those are keeping score at home. I forgot a J. I just added it right there. It's an important J. One seventy-two times the forty. That sounds familiar. And that's multiplied by I plus. What do we get with two forty-five, et cetera, multiplied by forty-two? Seventy-seven point seven one five two J. No, it just doesn't come really out of the side. Yeah, so <laughs> it's a nice try, but alas, no. 10,321.3152. OK, that's multiplied by j minus 1 half times 9.8 times 42 squared multiplied by j. Seventeen thousand two hundred. Eighty-seven point two. Like this? Yeah. Great. That's multiplied by J. So Make sense considering our final number here, which wouldn't make any sense with that. So what do we get? 6,643. 0.6. 0.6? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now we get 7,227.061i plus, I'm guessing something in the neighborhood of 1,677.715, yes? <laughs> multiplied by j. In other words, our position final is equal to 7,230i plus 1,680j meters. So this is what you're more familiar with. This is how we would have done last year. We split things into various directions, and we deal with the directions separately. This is, in a word, elegant. Do you see how it's all combined together and you can see all the pieces fitting together as one? And don't you worry, you will be compelled to do it using unit vectors. So you need to get used to using unit vectors. I will require it on, say, a test, for example, that you were able to do projectile motion using unit vectors. 